is friendlier on the stomach, A2 milk is from cows that only produce A2 beta casein protein. But what kind of science is behind this product? And what kind of share could it ultimately take of the US retail milk market? So you've been in the US market for a few years now. What, what kind of traction are you seeing and how are retailers viewing A2 milk in the context of a, an overall declining fluid milk market? Absolutely. Well, you know, the most important thing is innovation is the only way out of long-term declining commodity categories. A2 is a natural innovation. So what we've been able to do is establish a very strong growth business over the last five years. Got an 80% growth kager. We're in close to 27,000 doors across all channels of trade. So we've seen really good acceptance from retail and consumer acceptance continues to grow every, you know, every day. Um, so we're really pleased with the progress we're making in terms of establishing a new segment of dairy. So imitation is the highest form of flattery and we've seen some ret retailers jump into this market recently with private label versions. You know, how's that impact in your business? You know, not much right now at all. We always planned in our strategic plan that our success was going to breed in, uh, you know, com competition. So, so far we're, we're, you know, we haven't seen any impact to our business so far, but we expect more, more competition in there, both local regional players, as well as, you know, national uh, retailers coming in with private label. As long as we establish a really strong brand equity, which we're investing and continue to invest against, that's the best defense. So you've recently teamed up with Hershey to launch a co-branded chocolate milk product combining Hershey cocoa with your 2% um, A2 milk. You know, how is it doing and could there be other opportunities for you know, similar co-branding? Uh, well, yeah, Hershey's approached us and, and you know, at first we were kind of surprised and we realized Hershey's thought that A2 was the perfect blend of wellness and taste combined with the number one chocolate brand in the U.S. And so we, we put those two together and we've just launched that product. We have it in both a, uh, a gable top form, so multi-serve that's going across retail grocery and, and traditional grocery. And then we've got an aseptic single serve that we've just launched in all Sam's Clubs. And early stages, it's going extremely well. It's really just come out at the beginning of the year. Okay, okay. So tell me a bit about the target consumer you know who is buying your product and why and has your kind of understanding of you know who the consumer is and why they're buying it helped you evolve your messaging over the years yeah, that's a really good question because when we first came into this category we would have naturally assumed that our core target consumer audience was just going to be those people that had perceived lactose intolerance and they were having a trouble at digesting dairy what we've found over time is that consumers have taken the fact that this is this protein is a more digestible protein. They've elevated that to effectively a better protein and a better milk. So we see a lot of our competition now with organic. We've been elevated to the organic platform, so a lot of source of volume comes there. We obviously play back and forth with Fairlife to some extent. Nowhere near as much with the lactose-free market. Um, and then you have a lot of people that are trading up from traditional conventional dairy into premium value-added opportunities. Just in terms of the science behind this, because, I mean, how much evidence is there that A1 beta casein proteins are actually responsible for some of these mild digestive issues? And I guess this is a separate issue from lactose intolerance or a severe milk protein allergy. Well, I think there's a tremendous amount of evidence that we've done in terms of clinical trials over time. So it's never about one study. It's about the body of evidence that you put together. And over the many years that A2 has been in business, thinking about how far, you know, long back we, we started in Australia. Today we're a 13 share of the milk market in Australia, very significant. We've got our big infant form of the business in China. And all of that along the way, we've been invested in clinical trials and research. So there's a body of evidence that's pretty clear that there's this digestive benefit associated with the A2 protein. And, um, and so, We've had to work with regulators here in the U.S. to share that with them, and, and uh, to a number, we've had no issues. So, how has the dairy industry responded to A2 milk? You know, were you welcomed as a bright spot in a declining category, or have you been viewed with some suspicion? Early on, we were viewed with a lot of suspicion. And look, the dairy industry in the U.S. tends to be a somewhat older, legacy-based industry, and we we got a lot of pushback from dairy 
until they realize that we're just here to bring innovation into dairy and make more, have more people drink milk. And when they realize that, there's been much more interaction. I now sit on the fluid, the IDFA's fluid milk board. I've been invited onto that. I think that there's there's a, a realization that there is going to be a significant subsegment of dairy that's going to be A1 free. If you wander around the show, there are, you know, six years ago when I started this, nobody had ever heard of this. Fast forward today, there's five or six different brands that have an A2 component now. We expect that to continue, and the dairy industry is looking at that as a positive because it's innovation. So, what about sourcing the milk? If most cows produce A1 and A2, um, where are you getting the A2 only milk from? So, about 30% of cows naturally are A2, A2 genetics. About 30% are A1, A1, and then the remainder produce a blend of A1 and A2 proteins. We have a system where we go in with our farmers, we genetically test every cow in the herd, and then we segregate the A2, A2 cows, and then create a clean supply chain throughout the line, all the way through production. So. It's a natural wonder in that respect, right? Natural innovation. So we just go out and find those cows with the right genetics, and then we create a clean supply chain. So it's really, it's it's something that we can re- replicate as we continue to grow the business. So finally, what's the size of the prize here? How big do you think the addressable market is, at least in the U.S. market? Well, if you think about the fact that the you know U.S. fluid dairy is about uh, is about a thirteen billion dollar market. The premium specialty category is between three and four billion dollars. We think there's a very significant addressable market for us, um, not just in fluid dairy, but also in other wellness-based propositions that leverage the A2 protein. And we have a very aggressive innovation portfolio that's looking a myriad of, of opportunities to build platforms of growth for our business. So we think it's pretty significant.